Um, the telecom business environment and the competitive landscape are changing very, very rapidly. Um, operators no longer really are competing with each other, uh, but they're competing with a whole host of you know, disruptive companies uh, and innovative players that have entered the market. 5G is acting as a catalyst for further disruption, opening up many new opportunities, including you know, other industry verticals competing for value-added services revenues, um, system integrators coming in and you know, working and, and competing with operators on integration services for 5G for enterprises and so on. In my opinion, there are a few things which operators can do to speed up 5G innovation. The first is really to speed up 5G deployment. Even today, vast majority of people do not have 5G services. So speeding up 5G deployment with targeted network planning and investment based on precise insights um, into high value areas, key scenarios, potential users, that will be absolutely mission critical. Second, it's not so much about consumers. The focus for operators should be on enterprise or business segment. So investing in a B2B or B2B2X strategy um, from a go-to-market standpoint uh, with the enterprise customers and providing them services beyond connectivity will be absolutely critical. Obviously, this involves scalable processes, uh, working with, uh, with their customers and partners, uh, and obviously shared learning across the organizations. This obviously also means targeting the right industry verticals, understanding their strategic priorities and providing them the right solutions. Operator sales teams need to also be properly equipped so they can understand and address the enterprise customer business challenges. I think the third point really is about investing in workforce upscaling. Future sales in the enterprise segment, especially around 5G, will require a more consultative approach to address enterprise pain points. Um, it, that would include system integration services for their existing environment, creating the right tools, the right applications that goes with those services that they're going to provide. And service providers need to focus on building consulting and system integration um, either in-house or through their partnerships. The last step, which I think is absolutely the most important step here, is really about evolving and transforming their, their existing IT systems to support automation and be able to support a value-driven, flexible pricing models. Scapability obviously refers to automating um, the design, the creation, and the delivery of their end-to-end -end network services while guaranteeing quality and optimizing decision-making. Um, it also involves uh, being able to support more innovative pricing models, value-driven pricing models for their end cons cons uh, customers, be it the enterprise customers or um, for their consumer segment. All of these are very, very critical and needs to be driven uh, by customers' preference for innovation, speed, and service variety. The ability for operators to make money from non-connectivity services will be dependent on cutting-edge transformation software, which will provide operators the ability to intelligently uh, unify edge cloud, enable monetization across different cloud domains, um, automate adoption, adoption of virtual RAN, and leverage, help them leverage partner-centric, multi-vertical revenue streams and business models. BSS OSS solutions of the future must have a cloud native architecture to provide unprecedented levels of flexibility and scale that's demanded by operators. Cloud native architectures will allow operators to leverage the cloud's multi tenancy characteristics to build consistency of process across opcodes and help them scale based on service demands. And the most important part, is to help them minimize customizations and, and significantly reduce time and cost for development. So overall, lowering total cost of ownership for them. So in a nutshell, operators, BSS and OSS systems need to have a few fundamental characteristics. 
architecture should be cloud native, microservices based, and should be modular, which means the solutions can be deployed either full stack or specific best of breed components can be deployed based on service providers requirement. Operators should not have to choose always a monolithic solution, even though it might be on cloud, because then it defeats the purpose of having a cloud native solution. It needs to be available either full stack or it should be modular and be able to be deployed as operators business demands. Another important aspect is moving away from costly proprietary technologies such as Oracle. An option of open source tools and databases such as PostGRE SQL, Cassandra, and such. Interoperability in today's environment is mission critical. Hence, solutions should conform to industry standards such as TM Forum, Open APIs, and other industry standard organizations, data model, and standard APIs and specs that they are rolling out. BSS solutions should be able to support partner-driven digital services. It's not just about innovation with operators' own services, but it's a partner-driven model, and operators should be able to support a partner-centric ecosystem of service delivery. So whether it's traditional services for all lines of business, which means B2C, B2B, um, or mobile or fixed, or a vertical-centric business model services, um, the operator's BSS system should be able to evolve and be able to support any flavor, any variety of this, which does mean that needs to support various partnerships model, whether resellers, sponsorships, etc., cetera, um, and also multi-party compensation, um, partner management, um, agreements management, contract management. All of these things need to be supported by operator's BSS system. 5G-centric services, many of the variety of 5G-centric services that operators are planning to roll out needs ultra low latency requirements. So your real-time charging or online charging systems need to be able to support charging for ultra low latency services. This is very, very important. The ultra low latency requirements have changed drastically um, and it has become more crucial as we look at more innovative 5G services, such as you know, AR-related services or virtual reality or industry 4.0. All of these services, some of, many of them need very ultra low latency requirements. An operator's online charging system should need to, need to evolve and be able to service those or charge for those services. Operator's OSS systems need to evolve as well. Needs to support automation, support edge cloud services, including open RAN, um, multi-access edge application, 5G network services or slicing um, and support across different multiple cloud platforms. Closed loop service management, which means um, service fulfillment, orchestration, service assurance, all of that needs to come together and becomes very, very critical to meet the demands of the new operational environment that 5G brings for the service providers. Cloud native architecture demands cloud native operations. 5.9 availability is an absolute must have. And this high availability is achieved by a distributed microservices architecture with no single point of failure and geo redundancy. For example, let's look at Netcracker's cloud native solution portfolio. Netcracker as a company has made enormous investment in their cloud native journey in the last few years. Netracker solution is architected in such a way that it natively supports continuous operations and zero downtime. It supports rolling updates for uninterrupted introduction of new version of microservices, minimizing hardware consumption. Support for blue-green deployment to keep several versions of the same microservice to ensure stable behavior of change functionality and be able to roll back if necessary. Our solution natively supports canary deployment, which is becoming a must have for many of our tier one and tier two customers across the globe. Netracker solution also supports fast releases to production, 
So an evergreen product rollout model. New features are available to customers without costly upgrade. On-demand scalability. Solution is an, important, uh, is an important aspect here. Solution allows to scale up part of the solution or the entire solution depending on the load. When the load increases, it can be scaled up and you can scale down when the load is a little low. So it's an intelligence driven mechanism to, to scale up or scale down um, you know, demand and spikes depending on, um, on the load of the solutions. Another key element or requirement of a cloud native vendor is their ability to work with service providers in a continuous joint development initiatives outlined in DevOps and CICT methodologies. Netcracker is engaged in a number of joint development projects with our strategic customers across the globe. Netcracker provides the tools and allows establishing joint development practices between the customers and Netcracker so that the customers can influence product development, build their own microservices, and integrate that with their own solution if that's the route they are planning to take. Last but not the least, with cloud, the necessity of cloud security becomes paramount. Netcracker provides industry-leading security framework that applies strict security policies across infrastructure, development lifecycle, and operations to protect customer data and guarantee regulatory compliance, regardless of the location of the data. This aspect of cloud security, being able to provide the cloud security framework and industrial leading cloud security practices is an important concept that becomes mission critical when we talk about continuous operations in a cloud-centric world.